Well, the rain might be tumbling down here at Headingley in Leeds, but this is no damp squib. It's a Betfred Challenge Cup semi-final. It pits Wigan, the record holders of this competition, against a Rovers side that just won a trophy in the cabinet. It's a side accustomed to success against one, hungry and desperate for some glory. The two sides take their place either side of that famous trophy. We will have the 13 seconds as part of rugby league coming together against all forms of discrimination. And then once that ceremony is over, we are all set to get underway. As I say, it's a soggy pitch. The rain continues to dribble down, but there will be no effect on the play this afternoon. Wigan looking to retain their crown. Paul KR looking for a first final since 2015. And the two sets of fans have turned up in huge numbers and in huge voice. They are lending themselves to what is one of the great occasions of any season. The two Challenge Cup semi-finals. Let's have a look at the two sides. Well, Hook KR are bolstered by the arrival of Brad Schneider, a debut hero. He retains his place. Rowan Milnes is in the side too. Look out for Mikey Lewis off the bench. Well, we're going to brought Willie Isa back in for, to add some steel to the back line. It just means uh, that Joe Shorrocks, who has played very well, will have to wait for a place on the bench. But he, if he comes on, has plenty of options. Our referee for this one is Liam Moore. And the man in the video referee's booth is Ben Thaler. So Harry Smith to get us underway in a crackling atmosphere. The second of the Betfred Challenge Cup semi-finals is underway. It's Hulk KR against Wigan and alongside me, a dream team that won the Challenge Cup as coach and player, Brian Noble and Robbie Hunter-Paul. Well, what a terrific match that we got today, Matt. Really looking forward to this one. You've got the machinery that is Wigan, with superstar pace all around the field with Field and Bevan taking the headlines there. But their international cast surely are giving the favourite tags. But what we know about this whole KR team is they're so resilient and they're going to take it all the way. This is going to be one real, real close lineup. Well, we're just going to have to work out a little bit of a positional change here because Ryan Hall is not on the field as named. So at the moment, Mikey Lewis is in at fullback and Ethan Ryan has moved to the wing. So a change from Rovers to their advertised lineup as Schneider pumps that ball downfield. So Mikey Lewis given the starting job. And we'll try to find out whether that is an injury in or, or something else, gentlemen. Well, it may be an injury in warm up. I can only imagine that. You certainly wouldn't leave Ryan Hall out of your starting lineup the way he's been going this year. But the resilient group, the Robins, they got over that. Mikey Lewis has been sensational form all year. I'm not sure that they lose that much other than the, the brilliance that is Ryan Hall at times. Got to say. Wigan have it. O'Neill to Smithies. Let's go down to Damien, who I think has some news for us. Yeah, Ryan Hall looking very disconsolate in the tunnel, the whole KR winger, a veteran, of course, uh, these days, but he tore his cartilage, uh, tore his calf, should I say, uh, last weekend in the game against Leeds. He was touch and go all week, gave it a go, he said, in the warm-up, uh, but he decided he wasn't fit enough to make it. So, oh, what a spill from Senior! And Farrell is right on the scene, and Wigan looking to inflict some damage on Hull KR here. That was a brilliant kick. And Smith, what a kick. Moved, swung, and it gives him this fantastic field position now for Wigan. Kay Dallas with the settler. O'Neill back to Smith. Short ball to Isa. Rovers scramble for dear life. O'Neill again. Smith orchestrating affairs as Byrne plunges forward. Wigan threatening. Strong position here. Smith to field and rides the tackle. Electrifies that wing and contingent every time he touches the ball. Farrell now to Smithies. 
Another surge. Last one in the set. O'Neill poised. Smith, oh, it's loose and out the back. And the Rovers fans enjoyed that, but the danger not over yet. Smith looking for a cross field here. Made sure his back line was onside. And then Ethan Ryan, Good under catch. pressure from Toby King, takes a brilliant catch, and Rovers can respond. And they soaked up all the pressure that Wigan had early on with two sets. And Ethan Ryan climbed into the sky and plucked the ball out there. And that's something that Wigan are going to need to keep an eye on today. It's been raining cats and dogs absolutely all day today. They like a dry pitch, they like to be able to push the passes. They're going to have to make sure that every pass is on the money. They're going to have to slow everything down just that little bit. Yeah, harem scarum stuff in the Challenge Cup semi-final. Minincella it is who takes it. Almost to the 40. So waiting is Litton. Schneider will have to kick downfield here. And he's put that straight down the throat of Jay Field and Wigan just starting to turn that screw. They are, Wigan are just getting the dominance at the moment. They're playing the entire game. These opening four sets have basically been in Hulk Howe's half. What that does, it takes a lot of energy out of you. But they're used to it. I think the one thing that Willie Peters has brought to this team is, it's an overused word many times, this resilience, this doggedness, they keep going. Whatever happens to them, they always turn up at the other end of the field, so... We're going to have to be on the guard for that, but they, they clearly got some game breakers in their ranks, Wigan, so you don't want to be giving them field position. Smithies into Burn. Five. Unfurling the big guns here. As the last tackle is signalled by Liam Moore. Smith with one to the corner. Senior takes it this time. With a really good chase from Wigan. Get out of this if you can, Hulk here. That's Wigan's ploy. Box him into the corner, five metres from the sideline, five metres from the try line, and then it's a tough job for these outside backs of Hulkingston Rovers. We saw Wigan do that and specialise that in the semi-final against Warrington. Just keep turning the opposition around. Great carry there, both and Ryan. Well, who KR will remember back to more than 12 months ago, their last semi-final in this competition. Their fans came out in huge numbers, and they never got going against Huddersfield. But they are well up for it today, and their team at the moment riding this uh, wave of assaults from Wigan. The kick downfield taken by Marshall, and they just can't get out of this rhythm at the moment. Well, Wigan are clearly winning what we call the arm wrestle at the start, so these teams feeling each other out, they're bashing each other in around the middle, but the territory battle's clearly being won by the team in blue. Smith poised, rattled in by Ellis, who... Lost his call against Warrington and was dismissed, but his side managed to come through it. Smithies, now French, first time we've really seen him involved as the pass to King was read brilliantly. OK, I'll make the challenge for Reese Kennedy. But now with Farrell. Dizzying array of angles. Last one. All about the kick here. And Smith has that kick in game, and he's gone for it himself here. Dinked into backfield, and Mikey Lewis, sharp as attack. Brilliant from Mikey Lewis. He's one of the half-backs that has to hang around in case of those short kicks from Smith, a kick for himself, saw an opportunity. He was like lightning to get to the ball there, Lewis. He's not the tallest player in the world, so it's interesting that Wigan at this point in time are kicking the ball to the corners. Senior over there, he's six foot four. Michael Lewis is six foot nothing, five foot nothing. Put the ball up high and let's see what he's like underneath the high ball. But look, don't put it on the ground. He'll gobble those out for dinner. I tell you what, they might not measure him on the scale that you measured him on, Rob, but he's on the Richter scale for sure. He runs hard. Schneider again, use that boot. Pumps it downfield. Marshall again takes it. Rovers chase. We'll catch up with him 40 hours. Shot. From the Wigan post, and there was plenty of endeavour there. As we can come again, Wardle. Okay, I need a muscle up here. They need to get forward and try and force an error. They need to stop this cycle coming off their own try line. Half way line. The ball has been in some open play for some considerable time. Isa turned back on the inside, and it's the Rovers fans cranking up the volume. It's O'Neill. 
Find Smithy. Smith, the shape is on that left hand side. Power leaks out a couple of extra metres. That's one. Another short side kick to come from Smith. Fields after it. Lewis underneath it. Fields covering it up. And a really good tackle to recover. It's brilliant from Hull PR. They're soaking up all of this pressure. They're clearly looking for a counter punch. They're blowing for wind. You can see them struggling to get back, but they stay in the game. They stay in the battle. They understand everything that we're going to do. They're going to try and release French and feel a Wigan on their kick chase, but they've handled everything so far. Literally absorbing fair so far. It's a bit like defence for attack. But Hull KR do have some magic. If Jess Litton finds a bit of space to run from these sort of positions, if they can release the likes of Sean Kenny Dow. And Brian Hall, his absence at least brings down the average age of the side. That left edge normally is a combined age of 104. And they haven't got it today. Ethan Ryan brings that down a little. There's Kennedy, swarmed in midfield. Rovers finishing their set inside their own half again. Schneider's boot is getting a workout here. And Jay, uh, Jay Field takes it on the foot. Well, that's a good chase from Rovers. They're, just they're getting further and further down the field in relation to their kick from Schneider. And now they get a knock on, they get a result. They'll feed on the scraps. They'll get everything from Wigan and they'll grow. They're like a shark attack, surely. Absolute breakthrough. Look how happy they are. Look how celebrate how much celebration they're putting in there. Every single player come in. They all run from the sidelines. They all come in and congratulate each other. Starting off with piranhas. We're gonna have the sharks. Yeah, yeah you got it. A bit too early for the sharks, mate. So we've got a scrum and a position that Rovers can finally. The Robins have a look at what Wigan are made of. Willie Peters, so far, so calm. Schneider bites into the line. Lewis, they've got it wide to senior. What a move for Rovers. A scrum play. And the East End of the ground is going ballistic. First time they've ever did. And they've come away with points. Who okay, are for? And that's why they were like piranhas and sharks around each other. They know they've got the game plan and some opportunities from a scrum play. And they've created the extra number. Went into the corner. Those Robbers fans truly believe now. I think that's brilliant. Really, when you're talking about piranhas, that's Mikey Lewis. He's the guy that creates us. He comes from the inside. He comes around the back blind. And he's a piranha. He's not a great white shark. He's a piranha. He'll bite, he'll go, he'll move. He'll create space and he'll create tries. Well, they got the extra man from the scrum, which gave them a four on three opportunity on the fringe here. You'll see that. Schneider's the genius here, attracting two defenders, which frees Lewis, and all he's got to do is dive in at the corner. It sounds easy, doesn't it? But he's over. He, he's six foot four. He's senior. He wanted to dive 10 metres out. He wasn't going to be stopped there, was he? Well, he looks playing on this ground as. Uh... Lewis Senior scored a hat-trick for, uh, I should say, scored for Ireland during the World Cup here against the Kiwis of all teams. And he has scored a huge four-pointer. And you talk about feeding the energy from that east end of the ground. They've turned that east end of the ground into the east end at Craven Park. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a breathtaking view. You see the, the Robin song and... It's got to give you some energy. Um, I pick up on what JP said in the in the opening of the show. Here's Ron Mills with a kick. Yeah. See if he can keep his composure with all this noise. Yeah, mixed all and the chaos. Rowan Mills has it. not had the requisite car. There's a lot of things going for OKR and they focus on their performance and they know what they get out of everybody. Willie Peters mentioned individuals, but Schneider really digs into the line there for Lewis to have the two on one on the fringe. It was Snyder, he got the ball and he went slow and then he put the gas on him. Drew two players to him and Mikey Lewis moving at speed. And that's what makes him dangerous. He's a halfback, he can pass the ball, but he's also got wheels. And in contact also, he can pull out a tuck. He's immensely strong for someone. What did I call him? Five foot nothing? Five foot nothing. Love little blokes in big man sports. 
So Wigan get the kick off away, fielded by Mounds, George King, Ooh. who would love to lead this Rovers side to Wembley. A brotherly battle this afternoon with Toby King on the Wigan side. Only one can please the family. He is certainly having a pop. Litton, out to Kennedy. Ferocious running and a nice offload to Litton. But the second phase here. And the Chella continues the good work. Excellent goal forward play from Moncler. Great offload from Kennedy. Minchella then hits the line and gets meters after contact as well. Milnes turns it back for Lynette. Ducked to the ground. By some uncompromising defence and then Litton with a clever kick just dabbed into backfield. It will skip along this turf and just carry for a seven tackle set. But no. Those are the inches, Matt, that are really difficult in rugby league. So they get seven tackles from the 20 metres. Six inches this side of the line, and OKR absolutely dominating field position. Zero. And how this game has turned. And the atmosphere crackles and sizzles and pops. Here at Headingley, those Wigan fans getting a dowsing on the Western Terrace know that their team still possess a threat. Farrell. Two. O'Neill, who has taken that nine spot for himself here, finds Smithies, swarmed upon. No space afforded. A spirited line. Smith spots the space in behind. Marshall's on his bike. Good screening run there, though, by Senior. And Lewis just allows that ball to trickle dead. And a seven tackle set for Rovers. Those inches again, Nobby. Too big. Big games, it might make the difference at the end. You look at the energy battle. I think they're approaching this game with real vigour of the Rovers players. Every time we're going to get the ball, they're meeting them, they're getting off the line, they're showing their intent. And we should we question the game of rugby league on many occasions, but these two teams are really up for today. I've got to say as well, I'm liking the battle that's forming between Morgan Smithies and Alian Minchella. Both of them ball playing back rowers go to the line, they can both run the ball, they can both pass the ball, but they're both very physical as well. Play long minutes and a lot of energy. Well, one man who would love to be out there today, he's had to take a spectator's brief this afternoon, he's down with Damien, it's Jordan Abdul. Yeah, Jordan out and injured for the season, but it's a perfect start for your team, isn't it? It is, yeah, we've, we've got our rewards there for sticking in the ground the first 10 minutes, we definitely won't win in the territory battle, but we managed to stick in there and we got our reward with we spoke all week about kicking it down this corner and putting Marshall and Field under pressure and then Field come up with a knock-on and, you know, we took advantage of that. I think moving forward for the rest of the game, it's just about keep doing what we're doing now, high completions and turning up for each other defensively. Thanks, Jordan. Yep, no worries, thank you. King here for Wigan, a move that didn't quite come to the finish that Rovers would have been looking for and now they have to be wary because the Tinger Express is on the ball. One. In the shape of Bevan French, Field offers it up to Miski, who's really impressed Two. since emerging Move. in the Wigan first team side from London. Former teammate of uh, Bevan French at the Wenty Magpies, where he actually played halfback, and Bevan French played on the wing. Wenty Magpies. It's fun for our Australian viewers. Yeah. <laughs> O'Neill finds Smithy. Oh, I picked some space there behind the rook. Last one here for Wigan. Smith's kick is key. Gives us some airtime. Another tester. And it was in the end Senior who took control. Lewis playing off the back of that. There'll be some tight boys out here shortly. They've been going end to end, haven't they? Kicking the ball, kicking the ball. Zero. And it's play on. Here's an error from Hulk KR. Smith to French. French throws a little dummy. Hop skipping a jump from him. Surrender. And that's exactly what happens when you get Stand tired. Four zero. decisions, try to push passes, oh. or the pa or the carries just become Stop. loose. Zero tackle then. Smithies finds Burn. What? Point set. Move. Options left and right. O'Neill is Wigan. Look to bare their teeth. Back on the inside comes Move. Wardle. Move. Oh, a little bit forced and laboured. Smithies. Weaving, bobbing, ducking and diving. Wigan in range. It'll be a go from O'Neill. How 
ruled out. Still the danger lurks. Smithies though to field. Waddle, what a lock on tackle from Senior. What a read from the wing. He came in, he was outnumbered, and he stopped the play. He was quick enough. Farrell booms it. Smith will send this one up. King's in the frame. or oh, it bounces down. French tries to smuggle it forward. He's given and a that's a turnover knock on, ball. Well, I thought the whole kit, our player knocked that on. It'd be interesting to see that. I just thought that was Ethan Ryan. Ethan Ryan that knocked it forward. Well, they'll feel a bit of grief there, Wigan, because even if it was a Wigan player, he knocked it back. Still, referees in control. Old KR of the Move. ball. We're seeing a few tired limbs now, which might relieve a few opportunities, Rob. Oh, certainly. I think what, I think Hulk KR have done their homework on Wigan's left side. They know it's one of their strike weapons. That's why we saw Senior get up on them. They're playing very smart at the moment, keeping it tight, keeping it in the middle, trying to muscle Wigan, trying to tire out some of their flash players. And I think the weather, they're playing to the weather conditions at, at this point in time. But yes, we're in that fatigue factor of the game. The 20-minute mark, start to look at some of the uh, uh, fresher players coming off the field. But it's going to be an interesting one. There's nothing in this game at all. Another big stomp forward from Bachelor as Schneider. Hoists one into backfield. And it's Jayfield who it finds in space before the chase One of the eventually things catches Willie up Peters it. would have insisted upon, just for our views, is that when Hulk KR kicked the ball primarily through Schneider, their line has got to be intact, they've all got to be together, they've all got to be communicating, be able to see each other from each side of their head because people like French, Miski here, Field, they're just looking for that one chink in the armour. On comes Kai Pierce for Liam Byrne making way. Wigan rotating their pack. And it's Kai Pierce Paul now who takes it in. Big leg drive. He's a handful. O'Neill sweeps to the right. French with that space in behind. Really good chase from Toby King here. Mikey Lewis has got to make a call. Will he be oh, no? What a him. piece of impudence from Mikey Lewis. Yeah. Wow. Abbas Miski won't want to see that again. He's brilliant for Michael. He's <laughs> done him like a kipper. That <laughs> footwork you used to have, Rob. You used to have many, many years ago, 25 years ago. Kevin Brown's run at the start of the show. <laughs> that was like Tom and Jerry, wasn't it? <laughs> Jerry just outfoxed him. <laughs> and then a penalty. <laughs> and Morgan Smithies. I think it was the man at fault, and that's been cheered like a try. Those little things that Mikey Lewis did, though, those bits of brilliance are the difference between winning and losing. A small part of the corner there, if he gets that wrong, Abazmiski puts him into the sidelines, and it's six more players in attack for Wigan. It's six more players in attack for Wigan at the 20-minute mark, where everyone's tired. And what that means, generally, that normally leads to a try. And you've got the attacking brilliance of Wigan, and they just seem to dominate. What? That leads to try. So absolutely brilliant work by Mike Lewis there. Kennedy taken down. Litton plays to Schneider. Back now to King. Two. Slides Move. on his Back. knees on this soggy turf. Taken to the line by Milnes. Schneider. Lewis drives in and a nice switch there from Kenny Dow. Pat Keg as he flicks that one out to Minchella. They don't want to let this ball. Go down here. Still tackles in the bank. 20 out. Milnes. That was a little bit of a uh, mix-up, perhaps, as King is taken to the floor. Litton. Schneider with a kick in behind. Marshall showed poise. And cool and calm. Well, not too much Wiedemix, these kickers. That's the fourth one we've seen go dead in goal. And it's Marshall, Zero. takes it in. Move! Phonetic stuff, it's fair to say. Yeah, it's tough stuff, isn't it? Uh, Hulkia are not showing any, any sign Move. of relinquishing their control on the, on the Wigan attack. Wigan are getting there plenty, but haven't quite executed well enough yet. Two. The one opportunity that Hulkia are at the right end of the field, they've delivered. But I think you said it before, Hulkia are a resilient team, Nobby. They know how to Move. grind. 
I mean, we saw it last week against Leeds Rhinos when they ground out that Golden Point win. And that's sometimes you've got to play ugly and still come up with a success. Yeah. And that's a sign of a good team. Smith is to French. French delays his pass for Field. He sprints at the line. Field with a dummy. Wow. What a try that is. She's a freak. Jay Field just lit the touch paper. And off he went. And it's all square. And this is the threat that Jay Field offers. He goes at the line. You know that all he does is that stutter step. It's a stop. And as soon as he gets the defender in front of him, the half, half plant their feet, he can then kick off again. And he can get from zero to 60 mile an hour in a ridiculous short amount of time. And he just skins him. And even though he's not the biggest player in the world, he's immensely strong. Look at him just ghosting around the back there. The play's on, out the back, well, and just stop, boom. There. And he just so flies. So Ethan Ryan, Kenny Dowell, try to come in the end but it, he just skins Ron Mills. Ron Mills is its man it's, so he gets to get to the airfield he has to make that tackle but it spooks everybody. Ethan Ryan comes in Kenny Dowell doesn't know what to do because of the speed of Jay, Jay, Jay Field. Watch this Ron gonna, Mills just plants his feet and he it. cannot I'm get there. Pass it. No I'm not I'm going to put my foot down the pedal's down but that's what he thinks isn't it? He's got, his, he's got the ball moving in the air, you're thinking, oh, he's going to make that pass. And that's what Sean Kenny Dow thought then. He thought, I've got, to, I've got to turn my back on the defend, on the attacker here. I've got to get out and support my wing on the defense. And look what happens. He, he can just do that. He does that so often. Well, it's just a metre, a metre short from Ron Mills in relation to what he had to do. And he released the whole Rick Wigan right side. He just ran straight past him, did Jai Field? So a big, big task now. Harry Smith, who, as they said in build-up, has had a mixed season with the boot. He was uh, a little more accurate against Warrington. But he will have the nerves chittering in front of a baying Rovers contingent. So Harry Smith, with a couple of fans chopsing in his ear hole, we're going to keep his call here, and he has absolutely nailed that. Kick. And now it's the Western Terrace's turn to lose their minds, and it's Wigan who have the lead. Well, here you are, Jai Field at his very, very best. Just takes Ron Mills on, and he can't deliver. That caused confusion with Kenny Dowell and Ethan Ryan on the flanks, so they, they make a panic situation from the speed and just blistering pace of Jai Field. And that's what those type of players, Jai Field, Bevan Finch, French, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for time in the game. They're looking for body language from players. They're looking for those opportunities when they can come into the line. So rumbling off the back fence comes Cade Ellis. Fresh from signing a new deal with Wigan. And that might steady their nerves somewhat. You saw the craftsmanship of French. The raw pace of Jay Field. What have Wigan in their locker this time? Willie Isa back amongst it after a niggling hamstring injury. O'Neill to Smithies. Is there a bit of uh, obstruction there? No. Move. We are more happy with it. Well, Farrell went through the line. Oh, Kipe is Paul! Drops it cold, and Rovers get the initiative. That schoolboy error there. Oh. Pierce Paul just having a little look, little look before he caught the ball at the defensive line, getting in front of him. Yeah. Catch the ball first, catch the ball. Made a ball pay for the defenders, didn't he? And in conditions like this, you've got to pay that sort of attention, don't you? It's just going to slip through. When other in a drier day, a warmer day, it'll stick to your hands. Luckily that time with the carry, turn back from Minchella now into Kennedy. Three. Big opportunity Three. for Rovers. Wait. Now in sight of those posts, Schneider. Four. Slippery run that Three. time from Batchelor. He's been good this year, Batchelor. Litton spins to Schneider, looking for some runners, Minchella offers it. The kick plays their best option oh. here, Matt. Put the ball on the floor, Release. it's wet. Nobody's going to want to lower their crane. No. Last tackle, Litton, now the back, Schneider. Lewis, oh, he couldn't smuggle that ball away. Really good defence in the end. 
But we're going to hold out. It's not a bad place to start a defensive set, though. You know, you're two metres off the opposition's line. Squeeze up your line, battle up your numbers, get forward and make them kick long. And we are back to the old trade of sets here. But at the moment, we're going to have to come out from deep, and it's Abbas Miski. Well, arms and elbows pumping. Wardle. Muscular work from the outside backs. Now Smithy's turn. Turned back into traffic with Ellis. Offload to field, broken field is what he loves. Swindon! Stand! Well, just make the challenge. It's not bad weapon to have on an offload, is it? In and around there. High pierce ball. The red and Serial bolt. offloader, isn't he, as well? Yeah, yeah. Move! Oh. Last one. In the set for Wigan, just shy of halfway. Well, Harry Smith sends that one up, swirling about all over the shop. Oh, good take. Mikey Lewis. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. <laughs> Nobby threw me in at fullback a couple of times from the halfback. <laughs> you know, unbeknownst to me, and when they put those things up, I absolutely hated them. And frightening they were. Oh, and they forced the error here, Wigan. Sheer intent. And Hulk KR just could not clear their lines. Schneider ran himself into a cul-de-sac. And there was no way out. He knocked it on in the end, didn't he? They're too good for that, Wigan. Trying to find an opportunity on a two-pass play or an offload. A bit of broken field football. They're too intense for that, aren't they, Wigan? Oh, definitely. They love that. They'll chew that up. There's probably no team better than Wigan in controlling the speed of the play of the ball and controlling the ruck. You know, that first bit of contact, keeping you up in the air, then taking you to the ground, really slowing it down. They're probably the best team at it in the Super League. It's been that way since Michael Maguire coached them about, what, 15 years ago. Patrick Mago is on for Cade Ellis, and he'll get a run here. Trying to splatter Rovers defenders, but they are made of stern stuff. Particularly Sam Luckley. Now Smith. Short onto Piers Paul. Had the arm out there ready. Move. Thought better of it. Smith. Smithies. They can almost reach out and touch it here. O'Neill peels right. Oh, what a physical oh, what a take! Short Kenny now! You can't go all the way. Jay Field around, but just for a moment there, he rolled back the ears. Ten years ago, he'd have got there. Not now. Especially not with Jay Field chasing, but they're in the clear here, all cow. Oh, off a check might have given that to Schneider. But Rovers can take advantage of a backpedaling Wigan here. Staunton, through one. That's got Rovers' tails up again here. Parcells, come on. Ramones taken down. Still tackles left in a strong position. Turn back for Staunton. This is the last. Parcel. Milnes with the kick. Good chase from the net. Good cover That's from Jayfield, but they've kept him in his Called own goal. Earlier. That's the kick. This weather, you've got to get down. You've got to make sure you clean it up. You're under so much pressure. It's a great kick. Here's Kenny Dowell on the fly. Look at him go. He's thinking, I wish I was 10 years younger. He's thinking, I'm not going to outrun Jay Field. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try and overpower him. But Jay Field did perfectly then. Just give him the sideline, size him up, and then chopped him down. Well, it was the pick from Kenny Dowell was the key in the defensive line. That comes with the experience, yeah. right? I can see what's unfolding here. I can read what's going on. I'm going to stop it. Staunton, plenty of space to wind up in, and wind up he does. He's only been on two minutes, he's had four carries already, Staunton. Smashed the line on every occasion. Parcel on for Lytton, as Minchella tangles with those in blue this afternoon. Setting a point for Rovers, here comes Parcel. He's a dazzler from acting half, that's for sure. Sam Luckley, the biggest dummy half you'll ever see. Schneider. 
Batchula. Wigan have just regrouped here. They just lost their way a little bit there, Hulk, yeah, didn't they? Pass out poised. Finds Minchella. He has to take it in alone. There was no shape around him. But it's a good position here. Inside the 10, let's tackle. Parcel finds Milnes, dropped off to Lynette, offload to Parcel, now Milnes. Well, they're certainly going to try and bamboozle them here. Batchelor, Batchelor will cart it in, and that is the turnover ball. I think Batchelor lost the count there. They should have played on, they should have kept offloading, they should have found another small kick. But they're certainly testing this Wigan defence. Minutes to half time. The Women's Challenge Cup final as part of a first ever trip to Wembley for them on the 12th of August, 12 o'clock. The men's follows at three on BBC One and the Five Live Rugby League podcast, which features our very own Kevin Brown, is available now on BBC Sounds. Well, they get a call there, Hulk here. The force to knock on is a big carry. Drops the ball, does he go backwards? Does then Parcells knock it forwards? Anyway, they've got the call here, Hulgar. They've got the scrum and feed. And when they were in this position last time, they stripped Wigan for numbers. They certainly did. And one of the things that Wigan going to need to do, they're going to need to make sure that they're good at, at the marker play. Because no one runs the ball from dummy half more than Purcell. He's absolutely devastating out of that position. Finds it. Oh, it's a looping pass this time for Ryan, who then just steps off his foot and comes back in field. Marcel scoops up quickly, Kenny Dow back to Ryan, they lost a little bit of ground there, lost a little bit of shape, and luckily, just says, right, let's have a crack. Two, move. And they are inside that red zone now. Time ticking down, the back end of the first half, Schneider, short ball, Batchelor. Right into the bread basket there. And we're going to absorb it. Parcel waits. Short to Lookley, offload, little wraparound play, nice one by Verstorten! Oh, oh, what a fold-up that was! Terrific defence! Still the threat lurks, Schneider goes for the big one again for Ethan Ryan! And it's a forward pass. That was a poor decision. As much fun as that set was, that was a poor decision on the end of it. But I tell you what, that's some scrambling defence by Wigan. Take your head off to them, take a bow, boys. You had to do some work here. But some more just start folding in. Man after player after player, just scrambling. That's a bit of desperation there. Yeah, yeah you can always hear what Peter say. Kick, slide that in, repeat set. Well, I think it'll be a message he might have at half time. Snyder's trying to create an opportunity, that's his job. Might need to create pressure initially for all this team. Oh, oh, oh he's the ball he's again. It. Parcells come away with it. Composure, composure, composure oh. almost. The watchword now for Rovers. That's Max Thornton again. He's giving the big oh. see you later under the ribs and he's splashed the ball out of his grip. Schneider on to Luckley. Luckley looking for the offload. Oh. Born in Kakoni. Grew up in Newcastle. In the line. He's certainly an advert. Oh. For the growing frontiers of rugby league, taken in that time by Bachelor. Two. <laughs> and it's so compromising from Wigan in reply. Lewis claps his hands. What's a quick run? Carroll was offside then. Mills back to Staunton. She's done Three. some work since he's gone. He is like a pumped up oh. roadrunner. Parcel now to Minchella. Schneider, this time it's a short ball. Four. And Kane Lynette One. guides Rovers within a couple of metres here. Schneider, luckily, Five. full Three. on assault here from the Robins. Wigan just about standing firm. Lynette with the flick off load. Parcel couldn't take it in. And this came up so. That's great pressure from Wigan. The flew off their line, they had to. We're in a two and eight, all sorts. And they couldn't quite control the ball, but they're going to try and reforce that error again. They've got them possession in the first place. They're really ramping up here, Hulk, uh, sprinting off their line, trying to force an error on the Wigan ball carriers. 
two. I'm sure Shorich can feel a bit hard done by that he's not playing today, but Willie Issa, I mean, defensively in the last couple of sets, he's just been burying his shoulder everywhere that it hurts, and, and he don't really want to have to go. Dangerous time here for Hulke Hour right now. Just before the halftime, how often do we see tries being scored right at the death, especially on the back of constant pressure, what we've just seen over the last four sets? So dangerous time, they need to battle up, talk to each other, and work hard for one another defensively. All this being played out in filthy conditions here. The rain has not subsided. The slippery pill remains the enemy of handling here. This may go... He's tossed to the deck. O'Neill misses out Smithies. Smith on Danger. towards French. Danger. French with Danger. the push. Really good defence though from Sean Kenny now. First by King to Smith. Pierce Paul. Ramrod straight from him. Wigan sensing an opportunity burgeoning. Smith to field, Farrell on that short ball, great career tackle. trademark, but a great shot as you say. Snyder it was with the tackle. Back he'll go to Smith, checks his lines on side, bangs one into the end goal, and there's King, and in the end Kenny Dow takes that in the air, and I think this might well be a drop out to come. Well, let's have a look, great kick from Smith. All on side. Yeah, so if Ethan Ryan catches that, yeah. he's got he's his calling play. Great call. Kenny Dow comes from the field of play. That's the right call That's from the right. referee. I mean, what can you do in that position? If you're Sean Kenny Dow, you know the player's coming through. You know he's going to have an advantage over Ethan Ryan jumping for the ball. So you've got to go with that momentum and take that opportunity. you just got to kind of back your defence. You know, you know what, boys? We've got to make another six tackles here. Mikey Lewis. Threads it downfield. Field will find Mago. And Mago just ambles towards that line before his body just seemed to stop in that was perpetual motion. motion. <laughs> Release it down. I, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I think it was powerful. Yeah. Powerful. But it motion. was definitely slow motion. There was some inertia there that could have been moved on the <laughs> back of the size in. of him. <laughs> Guy Pierce Paul driving into the heart. So strong. And that defence, the ball comes out. Penalty. Oh, it's been deemed to him batted out. Do Wigan take an insurance policy to him? Yes, I think they do. Got to take the two. In these conditions, going to be tight margins in the game. Harry Smith kicks for goal. He pulled it out. I don't remember his... You'd have to be the ultimate one-eyed person of one-eyed fanship not to understand that that was absolutely a penalty. Oh, 100%. But there has been times in my life and my career I've been that biased that I've been that one-eyed person. Well, there's about 5,000 at the back of the sticks there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't ask them. I think yeah, we know what you're... Well, there's one gone you bright red. We've all got it in our seven more. There's one <laughs> bright red going absolutely ballistic with the referee. It was a penalty. I think it's. A, I think that's a costume, Nobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's, it's, yeah. it's Spider-Man. What do you <laughs> want about? No, it's not bright red. There's one down there. It looks like a popular meat-based snack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's there he is. Say, there we go. That's who I thought had gone bright red. <laughs> <laughs> so he's really angry that block. Uh, <laughs> smiling. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> so with a little more serious matters to take care of just before half-time. Harry Smith with the chance to slot it, and he does slot it, and that is the last act of an utterly absorbing first half. Eight points to four, Wigan are in front here, but we've seen some really classy play in really tricky conditions. Absolutely the way we thought it would go. We've seen Wigan get field position and look to release French. Look to release Jai Field, look to release their quicker big blokes on the fringes like Farrell, but they've defended stoically of Hulk KR. They've been and they've found some reasons to get to the right end of the fields with, with some effort areas. You know, they've, they've forced errors, they've hit underneath the shoulder, and they just haven't quite unlocked the Wigan defence. So this is a really tight game. 
So half time, hook here for Wigan 8. Damien is down at pitch side with Liam Farrell. Yeah, that's uh, Challenge Cup final weekend. It's going to be some occasion. The women kicking things off uh, with a Leeds Saints classic. Liam already there. Wigan are 40 minutes away from joining them for a Borough of Wigan derby, but do not count out the Robins. They're very much a big part of this. Abs absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I think if we're looking for headlines in this second half, then we've got to talk about individuals. For Hulkiao, Mikey Lewis, Matt Parcell with his runs out of dummy half, and Brad Schneider have to run the show. And the technical side of that, I think they've got a chance to wrap. Even in this weather, I think they've got to produce some offloads to produce the points that they'll need to get it over the line. And for Wigan, it's simple. Don't let Jay Field, Bevan French, or Liam Farrell into the clear. They'll be relying heavily on Smith's kicking game. So back underway, how important will that penalty goal? Right at the back end of the half from Harry Smith prove to be it's still a score lead, but it does mean that as it stands, Rovers need to score a try to pull level. And I know that sounds like uh, teaching Granny to suck eggs, but uh, there we go. Just a little bit of uh, interesting moment. So uh, Willie Ice is still in the dressing room, by the way. So uh, there's an interchange to be had, or what have you? Mikey Lewis skips that one over the shoulder. Oh, what a belter that was from Joe Shorrox, who doesn't miss. They wow. might have a look at this one. When a player goes like that, when they're dusty like that, they normally suggest a bit of head contact was made. It didn't look bad, I'll say that. It didn't look bad from up here, but we'll see now. Oh, yeah, that's a shoulder on chin now. Back in your day, Nobby, that was a great, nice, clean hit, but Ooh. I think we've got oh, a bit yeah. of contact on the head there. Oh. So Joe Shorrox, he has a nervy weight here. Mikey Lewis, it's a, almost a cartoon-style oh, shake of the head. Well, here you go, I think his shoulders hit his head. So that's contact with the head. Whether he decides to put him in the bin or not, I'm not sure. I think, me personally, I think the initial contact makes first contact on the chest, but the upper chest. No, I don't and know where the chest through. begins. Not near the chin. Now watch this. That's a shoulder on his yeah, chin. Yeah, that's a shoulder on the chin. Mate. Yeah, you probably can't do that. I don't know where your belly button is either. I was place. trying to make it work, wasn't I? I was struggling. So Liam Moore. Over oh, Joe Shorrox. Shoulder. Shoulder direct to the head. That's the red card. Oh, red yeah. card. Yeah. Shoulder yeah, to the yeah, head. Is it? Yellow. Red card. Red. The red second card. challenge cup tie in a row. We can find themselves down to 12. Joe Shorrox dismissed for the shot on Mikey Lewis. And how much of a game changer could that be? They'll have to do it tough. Well, they've done, 39 minutes. They've done it tough before with 12, haven't they? So they know the script. They've got to build and get something from their inner tank and their, their whole being to make this work the last time they did it. Mikey Lewis carries on. A red card for Shorrox. And Roy Milnes finds touch. And the Royals fans lift again, Robbie Hunterball. What well, we did, we saw what had happened. It had a consolidating factor impact on the game for Wigan last time. Uh, look, there was still 75 minutes to go in the game at that time as well. Now there's only 35 minutes. Let's see if it has the same impact on the team. That can, you know, they, we've talked about it before. There's not a big difference in your defensive line by losing one player. Just energy levels. And I think with it only being 35 minutes to go, 39 minutes to go, <laughs> as I look at the clock, uh, that probably won't be as big an impact as the last game. So they've still got a lot to play, you know, they've still got everything to play for. Here come Rovers, to Sam Luckley and the Swigan fans on the Western oh. Terrace getting doused with the rain. Might just oh. be feeling a little more edgy. Minchella, Milne's back on the inside for Kay Lynette. Oh. Lewis was pushing forward there. Just looking for that late offload, last tackle. Down the short side, Milne's. Big tester at the back here, really well taken. 
Great take. Brilliant take on this kid. You know, I think one of the things that I just seen in that set there is Hokea's energy have lifted. I think they can smell an opportunity here. Liam Marshall's carries out backfield, really key. Giving those forwards a break. O'Neill tries to keep the service quick. Wardle comes forward, and it's the Rovers fans again just Moodens. roaring out their chance in support of their team. Mago punishing run through the middle that time. Oh, he's a big man. He is a big man. Last one for Wigan. Inside their own half, Smith flashes it downfield, and that will be allowed to run by Mikey Lewis. Whether he knew too much about that. Yeah, I think he bailed out on it, man. He thought this is going to go dead. Oh, he's hoping for that bounce. He wasn't going to catch it on the pull, so he watched it go sailing over his head and thinks, oh, yeah, I knew all along there was going to be seven tackles from this. And Harry Smith's kicking in the first half was one of the keys to Wigan's success, keeping Hokea on the back foot. It's going to need to be very, very good now that they're one man down. They're going to need to continue when they can to turn Hokea around into those back corners and make them try and lose and use up as much energy as possible. Bearing in mind, we've had 120 plus minutes on this pitch so far. You have to give credit to Ryan Golding and the Leeds ground staff. They were poking and prodding away at the surface at half time. This pitch holding up brilliantly. They had 48, uh, 42 millimeters of rainfall in 48 hours, and their pitch is standing Release. up to the test so far. Credit to them. Here comes Kenny Dow for Rovers as he skids along the turf. Scooped up by Ryan. Milnes offers it up to the energetic, effervescent Staunton. Knocks it on. He's knocked on. Too energetic and effervescent there. In the shape of the Wigan tackles. So, Wigan will get the scrum head and feed here. This is still going to be tight, man. Yeah, yeah. Hulkia can't run, afford to, to imagine that they've got such so much more space with the extra man off the field for, for Wigan. They've still got to go through a process, look after the ball and get to the right parts of the field before they can pull the pin on anything they want to do. Wardle gets a go. penalty. Brad Snyder offside. Offside. Rovers in discipline, handing Wigan a get out here. Ten. You know that better than anyone, don't you, Nobby? Because back in your day, you used to play with a Bobby. So you actually had two men in the backfield anyway, with yeah. an extra man out of that line. Yeah. Just for our viewers, a Bobby was a, a defender, a halfback that used to sit behind the line rather than in the line. And so all the front liners had to do all the work. So two people in the backfield. And that's why you look the way you do. Well, Tom Aberjack is in some bad way. He's uh, just the trainer has just signaled for a head oh. injury assessment. So Tom Aberjack will come off. Balls. Rovers are going to have to shuffle on the fly here. Sounds off. So just while we have this break in play for the head injury assessment. This is that red card for Joe Shorrocks. The shot on Mikey Lewis and. And, you know, and that's something to think about, right? If Wigan do are successful today, and Shorrocks gets more than a three-match ban, that means he'll miss the final. Mm -hmm. Off a check off. Mm -hmm. Running onto the field. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Kynhorst, isn't it? I think. <laughs> Jimmy Kynhorst has played plenty of centre in his career, that's for sure. On this ground as well. Oh, see you later, says Guy Pearce Paul. <laughs> And uh, release! Parcel went cartwheeling backwards. Smith may go. We're going to decide down to 12. And they are the side posing the questions right now. Smith plays Paul again. This time it's his opposite number, Staunton, who didn't take kindly to it. And it's come in with some physicality on the back of it. 10 away. Smithies. Smith delays the pass, breaks right towards Marshall, headed for the sideline, and it's a knock on my field. Great pressure from Rovers. Great edge pressure, Bachelor flying, Schneider flying to the line, tries this miraculous pass to Smith to Marshall on the side, and knows he's going nowhere. In fact, he's going into the third row of the terraces over here, tries to get the ball back to Jay Field, and 
He can't gather it in. And we were talking about it in the first half, how Hulk have done their homework on this left-hand side Wigan attack. And the, you saw uh, Liam Farrell then come in again on that hard line, and what he normally does is holds the defensive line in there. But they didn't get sucked in. They moved, they slid, they slid off, and they did exactly it. They used the, tri they used the sideline as another defender. This is, such a, this is such a good game. This is such a good game from both teams. Yeah, wet conditions that you have not sensed the drop in quality at any point here. As Sean Kenny Dow, talismanic figure in this Rovers side, tries to guide his team forward. They've been shoveled to the sideline. Wigan mean business. Wigan mean business. It has everything. It has everything. Keep on going, boys. Well, I think you mentioned it in the first half. You go anywhere near the sideline, like Ethan Ryan does here, and you get picked up by this Wigan defence, you're going into the third row of the stand. And that's what happens there. And look what it means to these Wigan players. Now they're the piranhas. With one player down, it does that, though. It has that consolidating factor like we talked about. It has an impact because you know you're back to the wall, so you have to do it as a team, as a group. The 12 players left on the field, you've got to come together. So, so the team in red and white have to take a step up as well to match that intensity that that the adversity if you like that's been brought Whoa. up on Wigan with the send-off you've got to get to the other end of the field with tough stuff before you can pull some points in the red and white Jake Wardle holds his jaw on the back of that challenge Smithies finds Pierce Paul who's marauding again with Menace 15 away O'Neill Plays it simple, Smith is Smith, though he dives around the tackle of Schneider. Now they come swarming. O'Neill again. Smithies cuts it in. O'Neill is the metronome from that base of the rook. May go. We're looking a little bit. One out here. O'Neill dribbles it in behind. Danny Dow, did he run? French off the ball. Well, we look as though we're playing on here. <laughs> now Liam Moore will take a look. Mate, we are on tackle four. Well, I don't think he's a penalty so, try. No try. No try on field decision. Liam Moore will send try. this to Ben Thaler. Uh, we'll take a look. Possibly a video referee booth. Well, please, on Bevan French. OK, thank you. So, we're on field decision of no try. We're looking for the minutes of a penalty try. So, we're looking to see if there's an obstruction in the build-up, so no tries to call on field. Look at the merits of penalty try, right? There's no way back there. That point, that fullback is back. However, just go back on this. Let's go back on this. Ideally, I'd like the the far one. There's no issue with onside, offside, so that's fine. I've got a fullback back in position, so let's just let's just go. So let's go. Right, that is a clear. Uh, escort block, if you like. Um, in my opinion, he wouldn't have scored a try, although I do believe that is a professional foul. Thank you, I've now made my decision. So Liam Moore waits. Just for his confirmation. try and the professional foul means that Sean Kenny Dow will take 10 minutes in the sim bin so for just for a little 10 minute stint we're all square in terms of personnel on the field right, it's the right call on both fronts Kenny Dow obstructs Bevan French so that's the penalty Smith will probably kick for goal here and it's a professional foul to deem to be a professional foul and that's 10 minutes in the bin yeah, you can't really argue with that. If Sean Kenny Dow was to do anything, he should have not looked at Biffin French. I think that's one of the telltale giveaways. If you're looking at the player running through, what he needs to do is track the ball. You need to turn into the player. Not be used to coach us this. Turn into the player, but track the ball. And that way it's fair, because you're not running the player off, you're running for the ball. I would never suggest that you would suggest us to cheat, Nobby. <laughs> In any way, shape, or form. I was looking at it where it's... <laughs> so Harry the Smith. Playbook. Please have a really good 
to be honest with you, it's just been isolated. He so has. Just keep reading his... it, over reading it, boys. And... Flakes this ball on the tee in front of a sympathetic end of the ground this time. Fewer cheers, more cheers, potentially for Harry Smith. So as the rain continues to drift in, thoroughly miserable weather. By no means a miserable game, and it goes in off the post. And Harry Smith still blowing the cheeks there, puff of the cheeks, tells his own story. He did a good fair lick, didn't he? So he got the momentum to come in off the... What's this? In off the post. Boosh. Tell you what, as putts go, that was never going to come up short. He smashed that ball. <laughs> Look at the face on it. In games like this, Challenge Cup semi-finals, yeah. You, you understand that sort of exhale. Ooh. Yeah, relief as much as joy in that occasion, wasn't it? Mago hammering off the back fence, and he's still going here. Buccaneering stuff from what? Patrick Mago. So eight minutes or so with both sides down to 12. Can we can make this period pay? Two. They've now at least got a converted oh, score oh. lead, but Rovers will certainly be Hawking for something of their own three. here. Move, screen out! Paul, goal three, not square, Matty! O'Neill finds Smith, turn back to Farrell, who will be used as the battering ram this time. Four, move! Back up, boys, back! Just squeezes out a couple of extra metres, O'Neill, may go. High oh, flows, the pass, they've got over up here! If the lay here, if the pass is good from King, good scramble, though, to shut down Miski. Who's still going, and then he seems to judo roll somebody off his shoulders. Kai Pierce Paul to Smithies. Maybe an overlap on this side. Farrell maybe just took the smart decision there and bought some ground and bought some time. Outstanding from Wigan. Started with Mago on the believable pass. Here we go. Kick at the back for Lewis to take, and he does so well. And then he's dribbled into touch. The ball thrown loose. Zero! We're going to have it back with another set of six here. Great work, Morgan Smithy's there, tracking him up there and then throwing him out. Absolutely brilliant. Well, the work Farrell effort and the effort here is a Wigan is outstanding. Farrell to Mago. O'Neill just directing the traffic, receiving his calls, his orders from his teammates. Smithy's to Piers Paul, who took that standing start. O'Neill will have another pop here. Minchella in the rock. Play on, says Liam Moore. Smithies. Plunder some yards. Will he plunder some points? Wigan sniffing. Maybe sensing, smelling a bit of blood here. It's a, a kick in behind for Field. He's just overcooked that. Well, it was the first initial pass from Dummy Half from O'Neill to Smith that he had to juggle. Otherwise, they had the Nawaz look, he had to juggle the ball, which gets to feel, and all he can do is manufacture the kick, which is too big. And in these conditions, on grubber kicks, what you've got to do, you've got to kick for the try line, which is the front line, not put the ball in goal. It's too slippery, it'll just skid off, and we've seen that happen at least three or four times today. Jimmy Kynhorst muscling up for Rovers. Still just under six minutes. With both sides down to 12. Joe Shorrock sent off for Wigan. Sean Kenny Dow in the sim bin for the Robins. Just pass out. Finds George King. Powerful drive from him. Pass out almost to the side of the ball there. Kennedy romping forward. have their line set. Fine margins game as King sends his side, pokes his nose through. Last one. Now a kick to come for Milnes, charged. Dow was it regathered, back to zero here for Rovers. And again the crowd lifts. Plus our weights. King loitering at potentially at first receiver here. Instead it's Schneider. Kennedy ramps up. Third. Move! 
Rovers fans begging for a score behind those posts. Schneider, nice footwork. Field held on around the ankles. Crucial tackle. Pass out to Minchella, straightens things up. One more tackle in the set for Rovers. Pass out, back to Milnes. Had the right phrasing, but Miski was equal to it. Miski was great there, positioned himself for that particular kick. And Raw Mills have obliged. I think Hoquea just a little bit too excitable there. Everybody's wants so desperately to get over the dry line. They're just losing their shape. And then they're compounded by giving away a penalty. Coach yeah. Killers. Willie Peters will be up there pulling his hair out. Good job he's gone for a close crop. In that sense. As Smith belts that one to touch. Tom Opacek has passed his head injury assessment, so... Looks like he will come back on. Go. Jimmy Kine wants to go back off as the initial interchange was made come on. Come on, that for that hand injury assessment. We've been piling forward now to Cade Ellis. Stampede from him. Oh. O'Neill lurks Stop. with intent. Smith onto Pierce Paul. Skimming that line. He's been great today, Piers Paul, and he's been a threat all the time. Hulk Aaron commit numbers on defence on him because of his offload threat. Smith, nice footwork. Manages to wriggle an offload away. Was it knocked on? It's been pinched back. Real Evan flow in this game. 23 to play. This is some semi final. Wow, they're going at it to the hammer and tongue, is the expression, Matt. Rovers desperate to return to the National Stadium and avenge their 2015 humiliation. Wigan desperate to keep their hands on the trophy and upside against the Cherry and Whites in their blue kit today. And Rovers get a big jump start here. I think 5,000 fans were willing and urging that call from Liam Moore. Day, I love the build-up and the, yeah, yeah, what just happened there. Michael Lewis carrying the ball, Harry Smith saw him, jumped all over him, and there was that little battle that led to that penalty. But then uh, Mikey Lewis and Harry Smith just had given each other a little bit of a serving as the penalty was given. Kennedy. Fronting up for Rovers. Move down! Parcel waits. Melvin Smith is with a bit of afters there with Kennedy. That's going to continue for some time. Schneider ran down a bit of a uh, closed avenue there, and he's being forced back by Wigan. It's almost, Great dare defense. I say it, rolling more. Great defence from Wigan. And then a foul, a penalty, should I say. And Mikey Lewis and Liam Farrell at each other's throats. Minchella gets involved. Feisty. I've called it I love it. Michael Lewis, just one of those characters. You get those, you know, with the little blokes in the game of rugby league, they're feisty. They're just they're battlers. And there'll be loads of talk going on. They'll be giving players on the opposition side a serving, just needling them a little bit. Do your job. Don't get distracted. Do your job. Do your out job. There. The six points behind. Here comes King. Leading my example. Move King! Setting a point. Tarsell on the back of that finds Kennedy. Eager for work. Two. Move back. All throughout this game in his stint so far. Tarsell finds Schneider. Short ball at the line to King, but Wigan up. Ferocious. Both sides testing each other's metal. Schneider. Oh, Lewis had to gather that from behind him. And Wigan's pressure pays off again. Well, it was execution. Snyder had to go into the line, he threw it behind Lewis. Well, maybe a bit early on his assignment, Mike Lewis here. As we see, he throws it behind him. And You've got to say that that's a mixture of Snyder, new to the system. Mikey Lewis, not the normal fullback, just timing issues. They'll get to some point 
you know, they, they want it to be sooner rather than later, where you don't even have to watch for where each other are, where their timing is there, you know where to be at the right time. Interesting to note that they did play out the back then because for the opening 60 minutes of this game, they've pretty much just been hitting the lead runner on this right side. And the space actually has been out the back, but just poor execution. So maybe go back to hitting their lead runner. Should I don't Tom think up so. a jet back on. Should I say Tom up a jet back on? Sorry, and Sean Kelly Dowell also Two. back in the fray. Our gone twenty to play. One converted score in it. Next one wins it. Oh, I don't think so. This is going a golden point for me. We shall see. You heard it here first. <laughs> Trying to put your overtime payments in. <laughs> Smith. Nobody gets that into space. Scooped up. At the back that time. Nathan Ryan covering the space. Here comes Kenny Dow. He'll feel he owes the team, so he'll be ramping, charging up his batteries. I wish we haven't seen of much of that is Matt Parcells diving out of dummy half, isn't it? It's Michael Lewis then, but there you go. That's set, what comes. Set restart for Hull KR, who have the man advantage now. Joe Shorrock sent off for Wigan. They're down to 12. Kennedy now for Rovers. God, his ribs will ache tonight. But he has ploughed that 404. That was in red and white this afternoon. Schneider. Schneider, dummies, Schneider still going here. Three, that was cute play. We can almost anticipate in that ball, and it didn't come. Vincella to King. Forthright carry from him. Rovers edging. Here comes Schneider. That time the short ball for Lynette. Five, Last tackle. Move. What you got in your locker, Maddie Barcel? Barcel goes short to Kenny now. Look at him uploading oh. in the corner! There you go. Ethan Ryan brings Hooker back within two! A huge score! And a kick for parity! Kenny now paid his debt. He got in there, he hit the line, he was dead, he was all over, and the ball popped out of the top. Watch this, watch the ball come out of the top. Matt Parcells again, we talked about straight to Ethan Ryan, Bo, get that into you. And he's got that in his locker, has Sean Kenny Dell. He can get the ball, release the ball, because he's long, he's long limbed, he's got great hands. He wraps that big thumb of his around the ball, gets a hand free. And it's just about numbers at the end of the day at that point in time. But what I love about that, especially Nobby, is you, you made two calls there. You said not only will Sean Kenny Dell come back on and have to prove himself, but equally the game's going to overtime. <laughs> Penalty kick here first, though. Uh, not penalty, yeah. the goal kick here first. Yeah, big kick, this. Yeah, it's got a similar feel, although, albeit with a good 18, 17 minutes left on the clock, if Johnny Lomax is trying, Tommy Makinson having to slot one from... It's got a similar feel, hasn't it, like I say? Albeit with longer left on the clock. Well, I also said that Hulk here had to offload. It wasn't a greater ex ex exhibition of that than from Sean Kenny Dowell then and Matt Parcells would have to play his part, and he tipped it on. I think also, you, you also pointed out, you mentioned, Michael Lewis jumped out of Acton half, and straight on the back of that, Matt Parcells jumped out of Acton half. Penalty given, that's something that they're probably going to bring back to the game, need to bring back to the game over the next 10, 15 minutes. So Brad Schneider, the hero at Headingley last week, can he be the hero again? 105 goals in his career, in reserve grade and first grade. And this one as important as any. The man from Adelaide to Boo Rovers level has nailed it! Ten apiece! Hold on to your seats, because this cup tie, this, this semi final, is only just revving up. This is a good game. What a great game of football. What a kick. They barely got off the ground there. Kick it was a worm tickler. There's your off the sticks. There's Parcells. There's Ethan Ryan with the finish. Get in. And then the kick. I, every day of the week I thought he's going to miss this. There's no way. He was looking at it and not looking at it. And then he just went, plop. There you go. 
So waiting to kick us off again. Rovers will get the ball back here. Barring an error. And it'll be Lewis Senior who takes one for the team and takes his side forward. But Wigan off the line and belting hard. They used to watch, you know, Ch Challenge Cup semi finals at Headingley and they always had a special feel. With Ray French or anywhere in commentary on it. We're back there now, aren't we? You just, this is just as good as anything we've seen. The noise is deafening. Lynette trying to plunder meters. Parcel skipping from Actin Ha. Gets it away to Kennedy. Still quarter of an hour to play. Last tackle. Attacking kick maybe here from Schneider. Sends it high. Field over the shoulder. Being will to drop it. By that huge Rovers. Group of fans, but those at the opposite end, the Western Terrace, absolute fair play to them. Those in cherry and white, and their team trying to stand up firm for them. Miski now. Every tackle being willed by those Rovers fans, and they are matching that intensity. Smith kicks. Good cover by Lewis. Space to move into, but it'll be senior. Who does the hard yards? Well, it's gone into that end-to-end -end stuff now at 10 all. Who'll crack, who might not crack? Okay, with the extra person. They can't go away from what they've done. They've got to stick with the process, otherwise they'll come unstuck against this really determined Wigan team. Sean Kenny down. Driving every leg and limb. Here comes Lewis. Moves. Taken down on the 40. Parcel plays simple to King. Wet weather rugby league here. Now the kick. Schneider already winding up the boot. Farrell tries to get to him. Marshall being pressured and he does pass the test. They're great, the Wigan back three. Jay Peel, and Marshall, have a smishki today. I've cleaned everything up, but they're under extreme pressure here. Great tackle from the whole car forwards. And they are trying to bend this Wigan respite back. Water that time on the back. And they're, they're being carried on a wave and a crescendo of noise from those whole car fans at the other end. It seems the further, the closer they are to their fans, the more energy they have. They are certainly ensuring we're going to be in, drowned in their own end of the field here. 13 to play. All square here as Smith belts that ball down the field. A nervous spectator on the sideline will be Jordan Abdul. He's with Damien. Yeah, he's scratching his beard. He's uh, biting his nails. What, how do you see it? It's still an even game. I think it took us a good 10 minutes to, you know, get used to being up a player. I think Wigan responded to the red card a lot better than we did, but, you know, that, that try's got us back in the game now and hopefully, you know, having the numerical advantage that we can come away with a win now. Thanks a lot. No worries, thank you. Four square. Who will bite first? Who will blink first? Kenny Dow. Looking for an offload, found one. Brilliant cover tackle, though. That source from Toby King and forces an error. Marcells is disappointed with that. Kenny Dowell's impacting on the game. Let's see if we can see a knock on on this. I don't think one. Well, that's <laughs> unsurprisingly greeted with Boos. Let's get in, boys, please. It's poor for Pan to come on. It's Tarsell there. Well, they surely kept that in his grasp, but mm. there we go. Paul made scrum formed. Rovers under the pump on this particular set. Wardle. Schneider wraps. One. And does a miss. Move. Field finds Farrell. Two. Put down. All my boys hold. 
Paul. In traffic centre field. Smithies. Pierce Paul is on now. Flings an offload after Kalani with the net. Little pot pass by French. Here comes King. Three. Running back into the traffic. Oh. Well, they nearly got free on the right side by a French. But they couldn't get the ball over the top. Kenny Dow's running around and doing oh. everything. He's stopping plays, Release. creating plays, and trying to oh, win this oh. game single-handedly. He might just do that. Field. Hits the line out the back. Oh. Great rack tackle again oh. from Schneider. Move. Oh, Hit and stuck. Boomed off the beat by Smith. Swirling, swirling. And Brilliant take of the Come back. Out. Equally good. As good Stand as the kick from Rovers. Oh, there's some high-quality play being made from both teams. Catching in the backfield. Move. The quality kick from Move. Smith. The quality of the oh, chase. No. Oh. We have got a oh, semi on our hands, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Third. Move straight out. Ten apiece. Parcel finds off a check. And Four. Lewis moves. Taken down. The wriggling Four. fish act Four. in Four. Four. middle of the field. Off check, skimming right, the line. He might find some space here. Can he release that pass? Oh, oh that was a horrible-looking challenge. Gonna get bent. Double in the wrong way. We're going to look at it now because he's going to go to the screen. He's back up, Tom. Have a check. Was the head contact in there? I know. I don't know. Bevan French got tangled underneath his legs, and that's what makes the tackle look a little bit worse. Boom there. Ooh. It's not as big a contact, is it? Let's have a look. Any contact with the head. Oh, yeah. It was head to head, it's yeah. an accident. Yeah. I think it's a head clash as much as anything. Boy, we've had some incident in this game. I think it's a head clash. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, 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 it it's the back of his shoulder, isn't it? It's kind of his head kind of whiplashes into he, the back of the shoulder. It's it clearly dangerous. He's falling, but there's contact with the head. There is, mate, there is. It's been reviewed. It's been reviewed, Liz. So, penalty rumors. Farrell no, took some uh, getting used ball. to that decision, it's fair to say. Penalty sufficient. I think that's a sensible call. Yeah, I it's think punishment. he was falling to the ground. Is he, he was falling is to the ground. In a bad position. So Schneider. You go for the drop goal this set. Touch. You go for the drop goal this set. Oh, you do. You play at the middle and aim to get a penalty out of the opposition. You do. You let that thing called... One. Time play it on the on the opposition's mind to so go get get a one pointer get ahead of them and let them play against the clock. Here come Rovers. Two. Move Leon. Parcel waits. Right, acting half. Rovers one points now. They don't want an extra Three. set of golden point Move. time. Schneider oh, lurking. They'll play it this time. Milnes Schneider to the line. Came the net. Classic line from him, Moves. but again, Wigan grafting. Players dragging themselves up the canvas here. The back end of this game. They got numbers on the right side. They got numbers on the right. They will take Schneider on a drop goal. They set up for this one. Schneider dribbles here behind, straight to Smith. Wow, that's a wrong option. Wow. I'm going to say it. That was the wrong option. I'm not out there. I'm not got players in my Move. face, but that looked like the wrong option. Should have gone for the one pointer. O'Neill finds Marshall. Three. So Move. often those outside backs. Uh, the donkeys of the team, and I don't mean that in a derogatory term. I mean Great. that. In terms of the hard work they do, and that was a really incisive run from Brad O'Neill. Scooped up by Miski. Following suit. Last one. It's a long way out here. Should be an attacking kick. Harry Smith sends it off the toe. It's another. Howler is going to split fullback and wing it. The bounce is kind. No, oh, Ethan Ryan. Just about got it. That was a lucky bounce there. That was an absolute pearl of a torpedo bomb. It's moved in the air, did everything right. Found ground. Very lucky. Very lucky, whole KR. I tell you what, every time. Harry Smith kicks the ball, Bevan French is trailing it like a missile. Lewis that time, offering the ball up. Move. 
trying to get Rovers on the front foot. It's 12 against 13. Wigan down to 12 after Joe Shorrock sending off. Man advantage for those in red and white. Tarsal finds Luckley. Good carry. Steamroller in stuff from him. Help! Last Relation. one, Bill, on the Rovers. Goal five. Schneider's turn to give it some air time. And field is home at the back. Danger. Will soon be swamped. Surrender. Got to think about your discipline here as well now. Tell you what, Wigan are looking tired. They're trailing back on side real slowly. A lot of their big boys just walking back. Move. Remember, Move. they're still a one man down. As it stands, we are heading for Golden Point with six minutes, just over six minutes remaining. Jay Field starting to sniff around the middle of the park now. Golden Point, two patches, two, well, infinite periods of five minutes until each side. Harry Smith got a four, he's out the 40. I thought he was going to try and so level the 40 20. One halfway. Back to Smith, it goes. Less distance this time, more height. Pierce pulls in the frame, passes off his shoulder. Lewis dropped it. And then they drag him over the line. Well, that has been called a steep. Drop out here. There's a drop goal attempt for Wigan. I would have a look at that tackle on the kick. Definitely. Did he not get tackled before he caught the ball? Definitely. Uh, and a little bit of controversy, perhaps. I mean, as far as I know, you're not allowed to lay a finger on him. Okay, more talking points. Let's go. Drama, drama, drama. Golden point on the horizon. Infinite periods, as I say, of five minutes. No, they'll go for a drop ends. goal this set. If you're Wigan, go for the drop goal this set. It might not be needed. Here they come until we have a winner. Surrender. Any point Stand. will count. Stand. Harry Smith not tempted into it this time. Warder will set a closer point here. We'll play in the Smith middle. He's waiting. They've got options. They've got Jay Field who can kick drop goals. They've got Surrender. Harry Smith who can kick drop goals. Now Never it's French. Smith. Now it's Smith. They'll come out to swamp him. He'll get it wide to French. French is one is blocked and it's straight to the lurking. Oh, I thought he was offside. James Batchelor, is he offside? He's allowed to play on. Wow, great excitement, great drama. Who's going to kick it? Harry Smith, no. Back to Bevan French, he'll have a crack. Great effort from Moppet. Was it opposite? I couldn't see who ricocheted it down, but was he offside? OK, our fans trying to lead their team. Senior trying to lead them on the field. Parcel spins it to Milne, who uses a bit of footwork. Last one. So we're going to have won the mini tussle on that set because Rovers having to kick. But this is a real test of a field as it swerves through the air. Great take on the ball, but Schneider was there with a great chase. Brilliant from Schneider. Oh, six again. Six again. Not that it really matters. But uh, we can have it. There we go. Start of the set anyway, wasn't it? Smith onto Wardle. The whole okay, I do not want to give away a defensive penalty here. No team want to give up these penalties in these final three minutes. So here comes Miski. Move! Hold! Wow. What a... So, King. Four. Up the jumper stuff. Trying to get into the right end of the field. Liam Farrell. Last Move. one. It will have to be Four. another clever kick here from Smith. Far, surely too far out. Ricochets. Was it played out? No. Says Liam Moore. So it's still on the tackle count. And then Field is tackled with the ball on halfway. I'm not sure if he lost the count. He was expecting a set restart. One didn't come, and he didn't hear the look for the play or hear it. Well, here's a chance for whole KR here. They can get down there. They can get within field goal range. Play in the middle. 
You might get a penalty. They get anxious, Wigan, they may jump the line, the referee might call that. This where you play, play at the middle, and then you drop goals available. Huge carry from Upper Check that time. Rovers still have tackles left here to maybe give themselves an even better position. And they're staring down the barrel with less than two to play. Tarsal jumps from Attinha, luckily shudders forward. Off runs to Litton. Litton with the footwork. How Rovers would love to win this with a score. It's on. But a drop goal would get, they would take it. Parcel with the dummy. Parcel screaming into space. Last one. Schneider wants it. Schneider wants it to be the hero again. He won't kick it this time. Milnes. Now Kenny Dow. Kenny Dow still going here. Schneider drops it. We can survive again. Amazing work by Jay Field there. He ran from underneath his sticks to put pressure on Snyder, and then he followed that with putting pressure on Milnes. Absolutely brilliant work by that man. Well, Wigan might get a crack here. They're out on their feet. Look at them. They want the full time hood of the zone. Somebody can plan to drop a goal in some kind of golden point scenario. Oh. It doesn't deserve to be a loser. Yeah, that is a good yes. call, Rob. Wow. That's a good call. Let's replay this game next week. <laughs> Let's do it all again. So, Brad O'Neill being patched up. Wigan down to 12 after Joe Shorrock sent off. They shown courage in the onslaught from Rovers. They've thrown plenty themselves. This cup tie at the moment will not be decided in normal time. My Pierce Paul being patched up. Running repairs all over the field. One minute, two seconds remaining of regular time. Wiggins ball. Deep in their own end of the field. Just waiting for the call to continue. That's Liam Farrell. It's absolutely banjoed by a trio of Rovers players. They've been utterly energised by their fans. A thumping cup tie, a thumping semi-final. Wembley is up for grabs here. Mago leading the breakout. Time against Wigan in normal time to snatch it here. So here comes Kai Pierce Paul. Less than half a minute remaining. The big spread player coming here, right to left. Now they're going to go for it. Mago, oh Mago, that wasn't in the script. Getting battered by it was good from Storm. It's good from Stone Move. because he stopped a set play Hold. there. Hold. Last tackle here for Wigan. Smith needs distance on the kick. He certainly got it. Hail Mary time for Rovers. If they're going to take this in normal time, but it looks as though what? it will be a sin wow. and death decider. Oh. What a great game, Matt. Oh. You called it, Brian Noble. 80 minutes of utterly ferocious, fantastic contact between two top teams, Hukar and Wigan. They could not be split. Golden point to come. Hukar 10, Wigan 10 after 80 minutes. So you want to win the kickoff next? Wow, what a half of What a game we've had here, Jamie. Absolutely outstanding. I think the desire and commitment from both sides has been incredible. Both lacking a bit of composure there, I think, as we get down to the last 10 minutes. We've been screaming, take the drop ball and go for it. But I just think, again, the players have delivered, they delivered yesterday, they delivered again. It's what a what fantastic game. In fact, you were surprised they didn't try earlier for a drop goal. They seemed to wait and wait and wait. Yeah, absolutely. I think when we got into that last 10 minutes, he could have gone for, for that drop goal. But I mentioned to JP a few times, Hulk KR had that overlap against Wigan and, and often went for that lead runner. But if they'd have hit out the back at one point, it was a 3v1 for them. I think, I think they've had the perfect uh, dress rehearsal for this OKR last last uh, last week against Leeds. They obviously got over that one. I agree with Fair. I think they had an opportunity about eight minutes to go where they could have had a go and they put a, a bit of a nothing kick through. But Wigan as well. Wigan have had a dress rehearsal for this, playing with 12 men for large parts in the quarter final. I just thought the defence and attitude was fantastic. There. So. <laughs>
Well, we don't know who's going to win it, do we? I mean, it's a drop goal kick. Of them. Let, let's hope it's done and it doesn't go to penalty kicks because I've not actually ever seen one of those. It's going to be quite some golden point extra time. Matt, I hope you've got your breath back. Let's hand you back to our commentary team. Robbie Hunter-Paul, Brian Noble and Matt Newsom. Yeah, good test of the vocal cords, this one. Rovers fans have tested theirs out, Brian Noble, that's for sure. Well, I think Hulk will be happy with the kicking off. They've got to restrict territory now for Wigan and ensure that they don't get within range. So early on, they're just trying to establish field position for that. And, so, and this will help do it. Restrict territory so they may get a chance. So this is the story. Golden point time, any point of any variety, try, drop goal, penalty goal, will be enough to settle it for either side. So it's down to nerve, it's down to composure, it's down to class and quality and skill and physicality, all the ingredients that make rugby league the game that we love so much here. As Smithies finds Smith and he will have to launch this, give this plenty of distance. Lewis takes it on his own 20 and he's being beckoned forward by those Rovers fans as senior. Well, it's Guides a, his side forward. It's a great result. Lewis finding senior there to start them on the 40 metres. They are really desperate for that. Smith went for the 40 20, I think. I think that was his actions because we're on play four. So Wigan down to 12. Joe Shorrock sent off. So they've got the man Move. deficit. All square on the scoreboard. Pass out to Milnes. Turn back now with Kane Lynette. It's a long way out still. Litton now onto Lookley. Big surge down the middle here. That's within distance. That's within distance. Release. It's the last one. Schneider waits for the chance. Schneider sends it's it big. on its way. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. And it's the Wembley. The owners have been dethroned. And it's Hulk KR who are heading back oh, to the big time. Unbelievable. You can't kick it from that far. He absolutely nailed it. I didn't think he'd go for it, and he did. He did this seven days ago for Lee against Leeds for Hulk KR. Overtime, one pointer. He's done it again. Brad Schneider, the man from Adelaide, signed mid season to give them such a boost. And boy, has he done it! He's repaid it in spades. He is heading for Wembley. So are the Robins. They have bob, bob, bobbed over Wigan here in golden point time. What drama! What ferocity, what a game. Brad Schneider, ice in his veins. Utterly wonderful. Well, we've witnessed an unbelievable game there, Matt. Tough, exciting, good speed, good skill, offloads, bashing each other. In the end, probably the difference, one of the differences was the send-off didn't help Wigan, but they kept in the game, they were used to it. 11-10, wow, what a game. Brian Noble, your player of the match selection, along with Robbie Hunter-Paul in that. I mean, Brad Schneider might have put his hand up for it, but a man who was terrific throughout, won it? Well, he jumped in, had late notice to play full-back. He's played anywhere in this team, and he played brilliantly well every time. He's been energetic, he's been enthusiastic. He's run that backfield, Mikey Lewis is our man of the match of today. So, who okay. cares? Won this by a single point. They are headed to Wembley. Let's join Kevin Brown for some reaction. Well, it's absolutely going off down here. Brad Steiner, talk us through how you're feeling right now. Boys, when I love you. Now, mate, unbelievable this. Um, <laughs> what's that, lads? What's that? Uh, mate, can't believe it. I eh? never thought I'd, my two games being a robber, I'd have to have two field goals. So, coming down to that was a bit scrappy today, but. Mate, we stuck in there again, and oh, I didn't want to miss the first one like last week, so I've got to get the first one again. And coming home from Canberra, did you know this meant so much to these fans in the Challenge Cup? Mate, I had no idea about the Challenge Cup when I come over here. Mate, the passion in it from the fans, from the clubs, mate, I had no idea about it, but now being around it, it's such a good feeling to be a part of it. 
and to bring the boys who have such a good feeling to go into the Wembley. And last question, you dropped a goal last week on this ground, perfect rehearsal, what was going through your mind when, when you got to the golden point? Oh, I didn't want to miss the first one. Last week I missed the first one and uh, I practiced a fair bit during the week. I said if I go get another opportunity, I can't miss it. So when it came, I was pretty confident and yeah, at best I struck the ball. Brad, soak it up, well done. Well, how to make yourself an absolute legend in East Hall in two games. Easy, did easy. I mean, we were, we were having a little bit of a laugh about his drop goal against Leeds last week, but he absolutely nailed uh, that one. It, it was an outstanding effort from him. And, you know, two, two great sides today, you know, fine margins between both of them. And this just... Faye, go on, you're the drop goal specialist. Under pressure, the pressure we didn't put on the kickers all game was outstanding, you can't fault that, but for him to nail that drop goal with two players running at him, that is someone who is cool and calm there. That was a sweet strike, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, unbelievable strike, and for him as well, for Willie Peters, for, the, for this club, it's been an outstanding day, but as JP mentioned, there wasn't... It shouldn't have been a loser here, it was a really, really good game in rugby league, but they stay calm at the end and finish that off. We can see Kevin Brown, he's trying to get Willie Peters, but understandably, he's, he's apparently lost his voice. So he wouldn't be able to speak over the deafening noise here. I mean, what an impact he has had as a coach. I, th I think he'll be absolutely delighted with the way his sides performed today. The first 20 minutes, I've probably showed a lot of discipline uh, leading to the first try that they scored. They lost away a little bit, I thought, in the middle part of the game. Then the back 20 minutes again, they came good. Albeit with Wigan down, down to 12 players. And Sean Kenny Dowell played a big role in that game as well. We spoke about him before. Leader created that try to bring him up back level again. But they deserve this whole car. They've got some great people working behind the scenes. Uh, Willie Peters established... What he wanted to establish Willie Peters was a team that compete and fight for everything. And you've seen that today in, in, in the whole car's performance. Just uh, to mark your card, we will be getting more reaction from both camps on Challenge Cup Extra on the iPlayer and on the app. And we are down the Wigan end and the Wigan players looking distraught. It is the two flip sides of sport. Yeah, that's right, but I think Wigan deserve a lot of credit for the way they fought down to 12 men. It's something that they used to do, and you saw that spirit and fight. It's interesting that the player who nearly charged the drop kick down was Liam Fowler, a man who epitomised that fight and that resilience and, and that great that they'll live to learn another day if we can. It has been an absolutely incredible semi-final. It's been an absolutely incredible weekend of rugby league for both the men and the, for the women. We will